Right, so today we are looking at one of the wildest shows in UK TV history, Fat Families. It is one so many of you guys have asked me to cover and now I see why. This show started all the way back in January 2010 and the way that they used to speak about fat people in these times is absolutely insane. I'm here to stamp out the obesity epidemic that is sweeping the UK. One massive family at a time. It's so hyper energetic and unnecessarily aggressive. It's like he's in some dystopian universe presenting the World Cup of Fat People in a modern day YouTuber format. And the first episode, which is the episode that we're focusing on today, has a huge twist at the end that makes it even more insane. By the way, the way food and weight are discussed in this show is very different to how they're discussed nowadays. So if you have any sensitivities towards either of these topics, I just thought I'd give you a heads up and say you may prefer to watch something else instead. So anyway, the way the show works is that the presenter, Steve Miller, visits a different obese family every episode with the aim of changing their lifestyle and diet for the better. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the first ever episode featuring the Cuff family. I'm in Telford, Shropshire, and I'm about to meet one of the fattest families I've met in my life. This trundling trio are grazing their way to an early grave. Watch out, massive fatties, the lard police are in town. Now, the whole family doesn't necessarily have to be fat, and in this case, the two kids, Ben and Jacob, aren't involved. Instead, we will closely be following the mum, Tanya, who is 33 stone at 5 foot 6, the dad, Mike, who is 24 stone at 5 foot 7, and the grandmother, Anne, who is 22 stone, also at 5 foot 6. Mike starts off by saying that he's always been a big person and Tanya follows up saying that she hasn't got much of an incentive to lose weight because she likes what she sees in the mirror. Starving. If I do look in the mirror, I like what I see. I can stand there naked and like what I see. I love my big body. I'm sure it wasn't the most rapid dash door to door, but was it really necessary to speed up the footage of them walking that much? It's actually quite a surprising introduction because I swear in modern shows like My 600 Pound Life, they always start off on such a depressing gloomy note. Saying things like, every day I wake up in pain, accompanied with shots of them struggling to get out of bed in the morning. Whereas there seems to be an air of contentment here, from Tanya at least. It's going to be interesting to see where the motivation to lose weight comes from and whether any of the intense fat shaming from Steve has any impact on any of this self-love. Too much time sat on their fat bums, that's their problem, plain and simple. If they don't pull out their chubby fingers, they'll be on the way to an early grave. Watch out, Cuffs, enough is enough. Even all the sound effects, zooms and transitions, this is genuinely like the most off-brand Mr. Beast video ever. It's savage as well, Steve is absolutely grilling this family and he hasn't even met them yet. The show got cancelled after two seasons, but I'm surprised the first episode survived after these first two minutes. Anyway, Steve goes around, introduces himself, and asks the family how they feel about their weight. Right, I like being fat, I've always said it, I love being fat, I like what I see in the mirror, but I'm not unrealistic. You know, you can be too fat to live. And I think I kind of cross that line now. So maybe her health and life are going to be the driving factors on this one. I know weight and health aren't directly proportional, but it's obviously well established that they're linked. So I wonder why she's only just now thinking that she's crossing that line at 33 stone. Still, accepting that something needs changing is an important first step. So kudos to her for that. And to add to the motivation of living a longer, healthier life, the family reveal that they're going on a trip to Florida in 10 weeks time. So with two weeks of chasing their kids around theme parks ahead of them, they want to lose as much weight as reasonably possible before they leave. Plus, there are some more minor bonuses to the weight loss that they foresee for themselves. To me, it'd be nice to lose a couple of stone when we get on that plane so I can pull that tray down and eat my meals properly. Nice, so she wants to lose weight so she can eat more food more comfortably on her flight. It might sound ridiculous, but it's not like once they lose weight they aren't going to be allowed to eat, so if this is another motivating goal for any of them, fair play. Anyway, one of the main reasons that Steve goes to meet these families in person is so that he can observe them on a regular day. He wants to see what they eat, how much they eat, and what, if any, exercise they do. So first up, he joins Mike and Tanya on a trip to the supermarket. But before we get to see the absolutely mind-boggling contents of a standard shop for the family, a quick message from today's sponsor, HelloFresh. HelloFresh is a flexible subscription service. You pick a plan to match your lifestyle, get step-by-step -step recipes and all the fresh pre-portioned ingredients you need delivered straight to your door, and then you just cook, eat, and enjoy it. I have actually had a HelloFresh subscription long before they even reached out and I absolutely love it. Firstly, every week I get to choose from a wide range of delicious options. So my diet is healthier and much more varied and enjoyable than it was when I was cooking my favourite meal 
for dinner every other day. And secondly, when I used to shop to cook for myself, I'd often find ingredients were sold in way bigger portions than I'd use for my meals. But with HelloFresh, they send me the exact right amount of every ingredient I need for each meal. So no food goes to waste and every ingredient is fresh. And most relevant of all to this video is that they have a HelloFresh Calorie Smart range, which is a range of meals under 650 calories to help get you into and keep you in a healthy routine. For April, you can get 60% off your first box plus 25% off for two months using the code Arthur TV. The link to that will be down below or you can scan the QR code on screen to take you straight to the offer. Huge thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. Now let's head off to the supermarket with Mike and Tanya. I have to go over here, I need these, okay, I've got to. This particular aisle bit right there behind Michael is my problem. I'll eat any one of those packets at once. And I can't help it. A whole bag of these in one sitting is clearly a lot, but I was curious just how many calories it is. Now this show is old, so these exact items don't exist anymore, but the modern version of the Tesco cheese puffs has around 822 calories in it. For context, that's around the same number of calories as a McDonald's Big Mac, plus a side of McDonald's fries. What's weird about all of this though is that after Mike and Tanya finish filling the trolley with unhealthy foods, Steve expresses his disappointment. But according to Tanya, this was all a setup. Years after the episode aired, she said, they made us go around the supermarket and throw things into the trolley that we wouldn't usually put in the trolley. We'll get into the manipulative off-camera stuff a little later, but it's definitely worth keeping in mind as the episode plays out. For now though, as the observation period continues, the family are off to one of their their favourite lunch spots, an all-you-can-eat Chinese buffet. I like duck, but I find it quite greasy. She said, piling on more. How often do you have a Chinese buffet, then? Oh, God, easily at least once a week. This is pretty mad too. I was curious how many calories they were getting through here as well, so I did some research, and according to a safe food study, the average number of calories in a Chinese meal tops 2,000. To make matters worse, you're most likely exceeding your recommended daily amount of fat and salt in one sitting. Not only do Mike and Tanya stack theirs high, they also go back for seconds and polish it off with dessert. So now it's evident that their shopping and dining out habits are contributing massively to their weight, Steve joins them back at their home to observe how they live. What should we do then? Oh, crisps. More food. <laughs> I can't believe they've just got home from an all-you-can-eat buffet and the first thing she wants to do is raid the snacks cupboard. I'm never going to be impressed with a Sidemen 10,000 calorie challenge again. And in fact, not only is she outdoing the world's top food consumption content creators in terms of calories conquered, she's also competing with them in terms of views. Because this next clip of her talking to her son Ben is one of the most viral British TV moments of all time. Do me a favour. Another packet of discos. Yeah. The big bag of ten. Yeah. That's the bag I want. Don't bring me a little individual bag. Bring me the big bag, babes. Okay. Business as usual. Business as usual. Also, no wonder the kids are in good shape. They've been running around after their parents the whole time. They're literally their personal waiters and delivery men. I wasn't hugely surprised that she was whizzing around on a mobility scooter in the store, but the fact that she doesn't even get up to get her own snacks in her own home is shocking. I often find the whole 10,000 steps a day a little bit too much for me, but you've got to wonder if she even hits those numbers in a calendar year. That's the very fellow. That's what we're now. And that's where they'll stay before they're gone. What, you're going to eat all them? Normally, as a rule, yeah. As a rule. What rule is that? She makes it sound like she's a bodybuilder in bulking season or training for a competitive eating world championship. Again, I looked it up and this is 1,500 calories that she's hoovering up in an afternoon snack. And if you thought that was her done until dinner, you couldn't be more wrong. That 10 pack of discos was just the starter. I didn't even know having a three course afternoon snack was a thing, but apparently for some people it is. Can you get me a pack of cakes, darling? Any type cakes? Uh, Nanny wants a raspberry turnover, my killer, one too. 
I love how she decides what everyone else is eating too. Like Mike and Anne didn't even say anything and she's ordered a round of cake for all of them. Watching this, you've got to wonder if her unhealthy eating habits are exacerbating the situation for everyone else. That said, you can't blame it all on Tanya because not only are they independent adults more than capable of making their own decisions and saying no to her, but they also admit to having their own personal struggles with food. Tanya's mother Anne, for example, admits that she struggles with her mental health and when she gets bored, she eats for comfort. She goes on to reveal that she's put on three stone in the last 10 weeks alone, an admission which isn't easy for her to come to terms with. I don't know, it's, but maybe it's like a death wish thing. <sighs> that is dark. She's essentially saying that she knows that her lifestyle could send her to an early grave, and part of her is not only okay with that, but actively wants it. And she's not the only one who's really struggling to face the reality of it all. After consoling Anne, Steve visits Tanya upstairs in her bedroom, where he discovers her breathing apparatus. She reveals that she's forced to use it at night so that she can sleep safely, and begins to get emotional as she admits that she's worrying that her body is falling apart and that it will deteriorate before she's able to save herself. It's not too Frightened many. that it's all gonna give up for a get there. So. Yeah. I can't help it. <laughs> so the gravity of the situation is clearly not lost on the family. She might have a healthy amount of self-love, but it's balanced against a firm acceptance that she can't go on like this. Steve ends the day and tells the family that a big part of their problem is that they have no active interests and hobbies, meaning they often eat purely out of boredom. They also don't actually mention employment at any point during the entire episode, so it's hard to tell if they even have jobs to go to. Well, now that Steve's had a full day to observe the family, he returns the following morning for stage two, where he confronts them with his findings. You're a crispaholic, babe. Eight bags of crisps a day. <laughs> Give or, take be, give or take a few. If you want to remain a massive fatty, you will keep eating that. Crikey, it was a lot when he was saying it to the cameras, but calling her a massive fatty to her face was just unnecessary. He goes on to say that people have different ways of learning and finding motivation, and being honest with people is the way forward for him, but I don't know. When the clinical literature suggests that fat shaming is actually harmful to health and may drive weight gain, you'd think he'd go for a more scientific approach to such a sensitive subject. He definitely doesn't need to shame them either because they clearly don't feel great about themselves already. I'm in a rut, I'm a lazy fat cow, no energy, low self-esteem. Simply too fat to cope too fat to, to, to move forward. That was savage. And the first time I watched that, I thought Tanya was dogpiling on her own mother. It took me a second watch to realize she was just chiming in with her own self-image perceptions. Well, now that Steven knows that they want to change, his next task is getting them to appreciate the size of the challenge ahead of them. And for that, he needs them to face the entire problem, including parts they may have never seen before. I've it's never seen that. underneath. I've just, it's enormous, absolutely enormous. What's caused that in your view, all that fat? Eating too much. No excuses, just a caloric surplus. It might not be easy to go in a deficit, but it really is that simple. She obviously doesn't like what she sees and she knows she has to change. Steve then puts Mike and Anne through the same process and they too put their weight issues down to eating behavior and lifestyle choices. Next up, having thoroughly explored their size from the outside, it's time to figure out what's going on inside their bodies. So they're off to the Science Centre at London Metropolitan University for a full body MOT. First up, they have a few basic checks, including blood tests, and a professor comes in to explain some of the results and the implications they have on their health. Mike is told that because he has type 2 diabetes, the need for him to improve his health is imperative. He's warned that if he doesn't change his ways, he's at risk of some very serious and life-threatening conditions, including going blind, needing his limbs amputated, and suffering from kidney failure and heart disease. After that, Anne is told from her results that she has an abnormal liver that's saturated with fat, and as a result, if she doesn't change her ways, that could have fatal consequences. That was all quite clearly tough for them to hear, but the gravity of the situation really seemed to sink in with both of them. And so with both of their examinations done, next up was Tanya's turn. She's so big that she could barely fit in the bod pod. This special capsule measures the percentage of fat and water that your body is made up of. 
It's a bit of a snug fit, isn't it? You'd think given they made these pods to weigh the fat on people that they would have made them a little bit bigger. I mean, she looks absolutely terrified in that thing as it is. Imagine being bigger or even claustrophobic in that. Interestingly, even though this show is quite old now, they actually still use these body pods today. And they're apparently highly regarded as the industry standard for measuring fat percentages. And so the results are in. The interesting thing is you're not morbidly obese. Really? You are super morbidly obese. Okay. What is wrong with this guy? Why the need to give her a glimmer of hope, only to go on and crush the last shred of morale that she has left? I get that for a multitude of reasons he can't sugarcoat the fact, but making a spectacle out of her health issues like this is very questionable. And as she breaks down in tears, he doesn't hold back. 19 stones of you is fat. So considering she's 33 stone, that means 57% of her body weight is fat. That obviously poses a significant health risk, so the doctor comes in and explains that to her. Since this show aired, they've actually changed the system, so rather than being considered super morbidly obese, you'd now be categorized as falling into obesity class three. On average, class three obesity reduces your life expectancy by 10 years. So with the knowledge that the need to change is gravely urgent, they begin the process. First, Steve wants to encourage the family to make healthier choices. So he arranges a party and sets up two tables of food. One table filled with unhealthy snacks like sweets, chocolates, and fizzy drinks, and the other filled with healthy snacks like fruits, vegetables, and nuts. So, so which which side do you draw? I want to be on that side. This side. I want to be this side. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hey, go on, Mike. I actually really like the way Steve's done this, you know. There's no shaming or negativity. In fact, it's quite the opposite. The healthy table is filled with colors, flavors, and choice. And by contrast, the unhealthy table looks so bland and uninteresting. I think if you're going to switch up your diet and actually stick to it, it's got to be so important that you actually enjoy what you're eating. Of course, whilst you can lose weight through dieting alone, exercise certainly helps. And it also comes with a whole host of benefits, like boosting brain health, reducing risk of disease, strengthening bones and muscles, and improving your ability to do everyday activities. So Steve rearranges the family's living room by replacing the two sofas, which the family had been using for prolonged periods of inactivity, with a treadmill. Get your big ball moving! <laughs> <laughs> They're actually in such good spirits about it all, it's so nice to watch. And so, with their exercise and diet plans all laid out for them, Steve leaves them to it. Over the next couple of weeks, he's going to be tracking their every move with state-of-the-art tracking devices. And just so he doesn't miss anything, he's installed cameras inside their house. Whilst there's something a little bit excessive about all that to me, my hope is that it keeps the family on track. Well anyway, four weeks pass and Steve video calls the family. However, despite them reassuring him that they've been keeping up their hard work, he isn't too convinced. The results at the moment are, comp are, are appalling. No, kiss my because I've worked my I'm on that because I'm, I'm, no, I'm not doing it. Well, that went well. She's evidently angry, but with all that beeping, it's hard to make out what exactly she was saying. I wonder if she's angry at Steve's attitude, which would be valid. If she's angry that she's been putting in hard work, but not getting results. Or if she's angry at the fact that what she's been doing isn't enough. Steve does admit that he was hard on Tanya, but that he hopes that she'll channel that anger into motivation going forward. And just one week later, it's time for the moment of truth. Five weeks ago, Tanya weighed in at 33 stone, and now it's time for her to get back on the scales and see how much she's progressed. You now weigh 31 stones, one pound. <laughs> yeah, nearly two stone, nearly two stone, nearly two stone. Oh, you can see how much it means to her, and too right. She had around 19 stone of excess fat on her, and she shed around 10% of it already. And she's not the only one either. Mike and Anne have both lost 16 pounds each. This is, however, only the halfway mark. With all of them on track, they head off for another five weeks of their new life before returning for a makeover and a final weigh-in. And Tanya is just absolutely delighted. I look slimmer. I do look slimmer. And I managed this week 
to do one of my own shoelaces up. I sat on the chair, bent that, I couldn't breathe. Everything was pushed up. Eyeballs popping out my head, but I did that shoelace up. She is so funny. I actually really like Tanya. And it's so heartwarming to see her claim all of those little victories. If she's going to keep it up, they really are so important. The emotions have actually been all over the shop in this episode. We've seen Tanya in tears, feeling worried, depressed, unmotivated, and even raging with anger. So it's so nice to finally see her feeling happy and confident. And she's not the only one with something to be happy about either. Mike tells Steve that his diabetes levels have improved significantly over the past five weeks. A normal blood sugar level is around 7.8, but previously, Mike's measured at a whopping 19.6. Now, however, he's got them down to just 7.2. You've done so well. I just feel I've been given a new lease of life. You've done well, mate. I'm not surprised he's getting emotional. He's reduced his risk of developing life-threatening complications, and he's already feeling healthier and more optimistic about his future. And of course, Anne is feeling the exact same way about her weight loss journey. Oh my light, it's an look thing. <laughs> hey. This is no going back. This is, I want to see my great grandchildren. Fingers crossed she does. And with that, the final weigh in commences. It turns out that over the past 10 weeks, Mike and Anne have both lost two stone each, a whopping 10% of their initial body weight. And last up on the scales is Tanya, who's hoping for a lower figure than the 33 stone she initially clocked in at. You now weigh 29 stones, <laughs> seven pounds. <laughs> And she's done it. All the changes she's made have resulted in a net loss of around three and a half stone. Again, around 10% of her initial body weight. Understandably, she is absolutely over the moon with her results, just like Mike and Anna. She's made herself proud, her family proud, and the icing on the low calorie cake is that she's hit her initial weight loss target. I'm thrilled to bits. I didn't want to let anyone down. I said three stone and I've been so worried. And, um, <laughs> That's just really amazing. And there we go. The Cuff family have finished the process with a net loss of 7.5 stone. However, whilst the episode has a happy ending, the story doesn't. In fact, this is where the whole thing gets kind of dark. I went to find out how they're doing now and whether they've kept up with their healthy lifestyle and I found something that really surprised me. It wasn't that they returned to their original sizes, in fact, the family are in better shape than ever according to the photos on social media. But it was what Tanya had been writing on social media that was so surprising. Whilst her bio, fabulously awesome BBW Old Bird, BBW being an acronym for Big Beautiful Woman, seemed to show confidence in her smaller yet still somewhat large figure, her comments, replies and posts told a very different story. Under an Instagram comment reading, I've just seen your episode. I hope you don't mind me saying, but you look amazing. You've done so well. I hope you and your family are all okay. Tanya responded saying, the program was made in 2009, 2010. And at the time I felt like it was my last option. Turns out it wasn't and it caused mental health issues and all the weight to pile back on. It was run poorly by idiots who had no idea about obesity and there was no aftercare. I ended up rock bottom with depression. Three years after I had weight loss surgery and it was the best thing that could have happened to me. It's not hugely surprising that the show with the host who taunts and fat shames the people he's supposed to be helping wasn't run particularly well. But this is really poor from Steve and the production team. To make it worse, I don't know if Steve ever saw it as anything other than entertainment. He actually tweeted out in 2022 saying, I loved presenting this show. It helped so many, but like Little Britain, I doubt it would ever be recommissioned and declared, Comedy is dying, sadly. Comedy is dying. Is that what this was to him? A comedy show? It's no wonder he didn't actually care about these people or care about how they'd get on after the show. I feel like he owed them all a duty of care and really breached it here. To make matters worse, Tanya went on to reveal that not only was the show really lacking once filming had ceased, but it also had a lot of issues during filming. To add to the shopping cart facade we spoke about earlier, she claims that producers manufactured several other scenes, including the one where she she asked her kids to fetch her, Mike and Anne some snacks. She said that she was encouraged to treat her kids like slaves, 
which is apparently not how she usually treats them. The pressure to do what they got you to do was quite horrific really, she said. I knew it was wrong, but I felt like I had no other choice. When you're in a desperate place, you do things you think are going to help, but I knew it wasn't the right thing to do. I'm actually so disappointed that what should have been a happy ending was ruined by the grossly incompetent people running this whole thing. But thankfully, as well as being happier and healthy now, Tanya says that despite the difficulties she's faced as a result of appearing on the show, she doesn't have any regrets. I don't wish I'd never done it, she said, because how do we learn from things otherwise? Profound words from someone who deserves all the happiness in the world. And thus concludes our captivating journey through the most viral story of one of the most bizarre reality shows in British TV history. I hope you had as much fun watching it as I did making it. And if so, please feel free to subscribe down below for more videos just like this one. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.